most players look equal. Here, he is the white side of a Grunfeld and Danya by the claws. There is no way that Gukesh expected the Grunfeld today, but the Grunfeld's what he has. What do you think of this position? Well, my first impression is that I've seen this before, and that's probably because I have. I'm just very, very quickly inputting these moves into uh, chess space, so this is still very conventional. Uh, theory, e6, h3. Actually, h3, that is a very, very rare move. So let me rewind a little bit and give people an update. <laughs> funny, funny little tidbit. So the position after e6, now we don't really have time, Robert, to delve into the particulars of this line before e6. We have plenty to unpack from this position onwards. But the main move in this position uh, is to push d5 straight away. What is the point? Well, the point is to prevent Black's Knight from coming out to c6. And this is not like a, a super well-known theoretical position, but I'm seeing quite a few Grandmaster games. The first person to reach this position um, with the black pieces was a guy named Walter Whitman. Um, it wasn't Walter White, and he reached this in 1979. Um, d5 was played. So h3 has only featured in a handful of games. I'm seeing um, a game with Abhimanyu Mishra on the black side. Mr. Bishop takes f3, Bishop takes f3. Knight c6, d5. Yes, I still see a couple of games in the database. And generally, Robert, it is considered sort of a pretty big concession to give the Black Knight access to the e5 square. So I'm starting to wonder, is Gukesh kind of going astray here a little bit? Was he caught off guard? And was h3 a case of kind of confusing the lines? Well, I'm a little caught off guard that you've been mentioning poetry and puns, and you just mentioned Walt Whitman. <laughs> And didn't hit me with the leaves of grass, Robert. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> uh, listen, Robert, I, I contain a multitude of puns, but uh, that was not my best moment. Uh, I forgive you, but I do love the instruction you're providing there because uh, playing h3, allowing the black knight to develop, you can see that knight plunging into the e5 square, the bishop on g7 staring across the position. It still is a mixed bag because if white can establish a protected pawn on d5, you start to feel good about your chances. Maybe I can uh, tie Black's forces down to blockading my passer. But knights can be really good in closed positions. So some of this board is open, but if you can get that knight to the d6 square, one step beside where it currently sits, it stares over a pass pawn. So knights are the best blockaders. They tell you, you can just grab the knight and just drag it to d6 uh, quickly. Then the knight will stare over the pass pawn into the c4 square and also at the e4 pawn. So there's some positions where you regroup in this kind of manner. A move like rook d8 for sure is possible here, pinning the d5 pawn and trying to provoke c4 so that your knight gets access to the d4 square that's really juicy. So these positions are quite difficult to wade through the complications in, Danya, because I mean, every single move, even which rook to bring to d8, it's not a queen h4 with a mate threat. So white doesn't have all the time in the world either. Absolutely. I mean, it's so rare. You get both sides essentially playing for checkmate here. White has the more immediate threats, but black is the one who can set up the nastier threats if you give him a tempo. Rook takes a7. Now, Robert, are we going to see king g8? Yes. And if you play with, like, your a rook somewhere, that uh -huh. h5 is a massive threat. Yes, it's a huge threat. Yes, Vita Gujarati, he converted just a couple moves after we left. That result was never in doubt, but these two players are in time trouble. Actually, if I'm looking at this correctly, they're both down under a minute on the clock, so they have to find their moves, and for Gukesh, he could... Absolutely, and that is why I actually think you might have to move your rug from H7 to D7, and maybe Ferusha doesn't have anything better than a perpetual check, but with 10 seconds, his hand's shaking, he's got to make a move. At 5 seconds, rook H7 keeps his composure, and I think he found a drawing move. And I think, Robert, that Ferruja has to force the repetition here with queen h4 and queen e1. Right, cause there's no, nowhere the black king can go. You go back to f8, but then we'll rinse and repeat, so that doesn't actually accomplish anything. So for all the Ferruja, surviving this game, queen h4 back to e1, unstoppable checks, except with that bishop, and when you look at the three-time repetition, I think that he should be happy to secure a half point. Wow, incredible action, and they will not be able to make the time control before the repetition. I think Faruja, even with 50 minutes on the clock, you can just tell by the body language, 
I don't know who's disappointed here, Robert. Gokesh was winning in brief instances throughout the final part of this game. He had Rook takes D7. Um, he could have eliminated Black's Knight. He will be kicking himself. This would have been a huge win. But all credit to Ferruja for keeping his composure um, and coming through with a defensive effort. I'd be curious to hear from Gukesh if he saw Rook takes D7, because that was a queen sacrifice for just Knight and a Rook, and he was already down a pawn to start with. So that would have been a very brave decision, but one the engine uh, supported. So for Gukesh, I think he's going to be most upset that Nodima keeps winning, and we have a handshake. The game is drawn. We have a clear leader in Vikenze with two rounds to go. Nodima Kupu Starf won his game. Gukesh held to a draw from Ferruja. Love to see this though, Dania. These players, the game just ended. There's a lot of tension. They're analyzing positions, saying, could I have one here? Did I have the edge there? But for Ali Reza Ferruja and Gukesh, this is a matchup we will see for so many years to come. It's definitely a rivalry waiting to happen, and we got such an exciting game here. The opening uh, choice, excellent by Ferruja. He caught Gukesh off guard, felt like Black had no problems out of the opening. 